and welcome to Script Tonight React. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode six of The Expanse. And this episode is uh, called Rock Bottom, which doesn't make me feel particularly optimistic going into it. I'm girding my loins, people. Girding my loins. <sighs> what a half season. We're over the hump now. So we're on the sort of inexorable journey towards the season finale. I don't think any of my opinions have changed massively since the edit of episode five. But I did get a lot from the editing process of that particular episode that I didn't get while I was actually watching the episode. And I kind of captured that in the theories. I also rewatched episode four. Oh, I should also say as well. So the issue I have is that I can't screen record Amazon Prime. There's a there's now technology on it which doesn't allow you, I, I'm assuming in Europe, to be able to screen capture. So I thought to begin with, oh, well, I can watch Amazon Prime and then just use another copy from somewhere else to create the window for you. And I know you're already clamouring and saying you're going to miss these swear words from Alfa Sarala. But the thing is, the thing you're watching in that window has to match the thing I'm watching. So if I watch Amazon and it's got different dialogue in it, you're not going to see that in the window. And it's going to be very, very difficult for me to edit that together because I wouldn't be able to include it anyway because you would you see in a reaction that there would be no footage for. So I'm I'm happy that that's just how I watch it. I'm catching up after every episode on Amazon Prime anyway. So I'm not actually missing it. You won't see me react to it, but if there is a particular piece of dialogue in something that occurs on Amazon Prime that isn't in the copy that I've got here. I'll just tell you about it at the beginning of the, the next episode. If we find a way around that in the future, that would be fantastic. I think probably once we get a little further into the, the seasons, that will be different, particularly once we hit four. So you, please, no more need to put that in the comment section on Patreon or on YouTube. I completely understand if there was a workaround, I will do it. There isn't currently a workaround, so we just we just have to be with what it is at the moment. We're in quite a precarious situation going into this episode because we've got the crew of the Rosinate heading into the jaws of Fred Johnson, and we just don't know how that's going to go. He's such an ambiguous character. We've seen him do truly awful things. The conversation he had with the um, Mormon leader guy in episode four I felt like it was a really important conversation and it's taken me watching it several times to fully grasp some of the hints that were made in that conversation about the Nauvoo about the fact that he was watching the actions on the Donager with the OPA the fact that he expressed sympathies towards the OPA and is clearly involved in the OPA and yet in his past was like the physical embodiment of the opposite of OPA values as we know them currently. So that's just fascinating. But there is a lot of interesting stuff to mull over at the moment in this. You know, Fred Johnson is one of them, Anderson Dawes is another. Although currently, I just love him. I think that's a lot to do with Jared Harris. I love that actor so much. And he is, I have never seen him portray a character like Anderson Dawes. And I'm finding it shocking. He's normally a kind of, often a kind of typical fey British sort of a chap. But in this, he's he's powerful and assertive and like really quite alpha male. I got to be honest, I'm fairly attracted to him, and I I never thought you would, I would find myself attracted to Jared Harris. But who knew? You know, times change. I hesitate to say it because every time I say this, they turn bad or die. I think he's probably creeping up to be my favourite character at the moment because it's still quite early doors and people are moving around so quickly and it's kind of difficult to attach. But I think overall across all of the episodes, if I added them up, it's definitely Burton, Naomi and Anderson Dolls are my top three and their order only changes based on what happens in a particular episode. So right now I feel like Anderson Dawes is my favourite because he just had a fantastic monologue and Jared acted the socks off of it. You know, if Burton has a good episode this this time, it will be Burton. But those three are absolutely my, my favourites. 
Miller, I, I like in moments. I found that conversation between him and Octavia Moss about her not... She was saying he needed to... I think she was kind of being protective and saying, look, you, this is above your pay grade, you need to send it up. He almost imploded in the face of it and actually that was really well acted so i think when he's showing vulnerability i really love him but there are some ways that he talks to women that i don't appreciate so he gets minus points for those and it's why he can't be one of my favorite characters yet because i just i find him quite patronizing to to female characters you know the way that he characterizes julie mao I think he might have that very wrong. He's getting a lot of information from other people about just how independent, intelligent and assertive J Julie Mao is. And he's still seeing her as like a rich little, um, what do you call him, like daddy's little rich girl. He's not adjusting his view of her based on the information that he's receiving and that's kind of frustrating to watch and although i don't yet trust what well, is her name gia what's her name the the belter that's um doing the trans you know the language work with havelock i don't necessarily trust her as far as i can throw her yet i'm still i still feel that look meant something back in what was it episode three two whenever it was but there is a way of conducting that conversation and, and the way that he was kind of so physically aggressive with her and invading her space, I found quite distasteful. So it will take me a while to warm up to him. I'd, I prefer him um, humble and I suppose when I can see him thinking critically, those are my favourite kind of Miller moments. And actually Jim Holden has really grown on me because again, he's learning. That character he's not the same character now that he was in episode one. Everything that's happened to him that we've seen happen on screen has had an impact on him. And I really appreciate that when I can see a character changing and growing in front of my eyes. So I can imagine him very easily over time making it into my um top three, top four, top five. Well he's definitely in the top four, he'd probably be next on my on my list outside my top three. Actually, that's not true. It would be a Vassarella. She would, she would. So let's put a Vassarella and Holden in four, jump fourth. And that's only because a Vassarella wasn't in the last episode. She'll go shooting up if she has a good episode. Because again, it's so early in the programme. I'm enjoying it already. I've I've really enjoyed each episode. And yeah, and I'm loving the community. The community around this show is exceptional. It's, it's one of my favourites, actually, to, to be a part of because everyone is just so warm and welcoming and really wanting to sort of take their information and put it in my brain so that I can understand all the bits and I really understand that impulse and I, and I really appreciate it. So thanks to all of you. And I'm just ready to get on with this episode now, to be honest. I, I think it's probably going to beat me around the head, so uh, I should probably start bringing some tissue for these reactions because this show is, has made me cry far more than I anticipated it would. But without further ado, let's have at it. I need to borrow your spy on Tycho station. What for? To keep an eye on Fred Johnson. <gasps> He's overcharging the Mormons for their toilet seats. <laughs> well, you can't have him. Took me five years of sheep dipping in Johnson's outfit to steal tech for his competitors. It's worth a lot of money to me. Oh, my God. How's your son, Esteban? He's up for parole soon. Oh! You're really going to play that card? Yeah. No games, no subterfuge. Just straight for the jugular. I'd be happy to play some other time, Carlos. But the matter is pressing. Oh, my God, I love her. Then help him move on. Let me help him. You know why I quit the intel desk? I couldn't tell anymore if I was still working for the good guys. I could get the ice cream. You make the phone call. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait. Pause. 
So if she puts a spy on Tycho Station, that spy is going to be aware of, of, of the Rosinate crew, which is what I'm going to just call them now. Ugh. This is a good thing. So at least someone on Earth, a, a goodie-ish, is going to be aware of what's happening and they'll know it's true because that's why they're having to hide out. So instead of them coming forward and saying, with this madcap story, there's more likelihood that Avasarala would think it was true because she'd seen the other things that, that were going on. Oh, my sweet summer child. Oh, great. that's a brilliant development. And how fucking savage was she with him then? Oh my God. See, already. Up she goes. <sighs> Play. Prepare for dark and clamp capture. I would be shitting myself. James Holden, son of a bitch. Stay where you are. You either some kind of genius, Mr. Holden, or you the luckiest dipshit in the solar system. Why did you invite us here? You two were the only witnesses to a series of catastrophic events. You could be the key to stopping all our war. We're not the only witnesses. You were watching. I'll give you safe harbor. And I'll get rid of that ship for you. No one's getting rid of our ship. Because you're in charge. At least you think you are. You want to continue to play games? Or shall we talk about how to help each other? Oh my god. Sorry. Pause. I know, Miller, it's very important that we find out who kidnapped you, but just a second. He said, you know, you're in charge or you think you are. Which reinforces my theory that someone on that ship of theirs, the Rosinate, or someone involved in them ended up there, was a part of making this happen. You know, Addy Nygaard, potentially Naomi, Alex. I mean, it could be anyone, really. The, the only reason I'm not picking up on the others is that I haven't seen them give funny looks at particular moments. I can't wait till we start getting reveals at some point towards what's, what actually happened. Because at the moment, we know some of what happened. We know that ships came out of the sky and blew other ships up. But we don't know who, we don't know why, and we don't know if or how they were enabled from the inside. It's brilliant. Play. Here we go. Hey! You can't do that to him. <laughs> He's Star Helix. What did I say? We're going to have a nice long talk, you and I. How long depends on you. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's him. He was the water boy. And that's what I call high quality a tool. Oh. Why has he got his... What the fuck? What did I just see? He just took his visor off in space? Quick. You will have to testify. Testify? To the UN Security Council. You mean the one that you and the OPA aren't allowed into? You'll open that door for me. You want to use me to get yourself a seat at the table? <sighs> Maybe you know exactly where those ships came from. Maybe I have no idea. Hmm. It's a pretty big boat you're building out there. A small fleet of stealth ships wouldn't be impossible. I'm not going to debate with you. We're going back to our ship now. I'm afraid you can't go back to the ship. It sounds like he doesn't like goodbye. I'm taking control of the Taji right now. The hell you Please, are. Right there. What Those the guns fuck? can't help you anymore. You sure you want to find out? Holden, tell the butcher to call off his men, or I'll have Alex vent his bloody station. Sir, we have a problem. Ah! Uh. <laughs> okay. 
We are fighting for something precious here, Miller. Sure. A fatter percentage of the docks. I am talking about independence. Yeah. With you as governor. You keep missing the point. That's why you gotta make the Mao case disappear. You're in love with Julie Mao. Yeah. What a fucking mess. Or nothing, rat. Right? The net is old. By the time we secure the hole, half will be lost. I'll barely make enough to cover the trip. This is MCRN Scipio Africanus. Power down and prepare to be boarded. Who they want? Shit. I provided a ship for an OPA recon mission out of Ceres, which disappeared. The name of that ship is the Scopuli. That's right. I need this frigate to retrieve the lone survivor, Lionel Polanski. Oh, shit! Who? It's a code name. We received a set of coordinates from him a short time after the disaster. He would know more than anyone else about what started this and who's behind it. There's got to be another ship you can send. I need a gunship. You and I both want the same thing. To do right by our people. Let me do this. Why? You have some seriously pissed off Martians now. The skinnies want to take credit for blowing up the Donager. We'll give you justice with both hands. What are we going to blow up your big Martian warship with, huh? Little pebbles? Oh. Hey, hey. Oh, come on, do your prayer. I went easy on you before, but now you're not going to pass through the restricted zone on your way home. Ball and yeah. Go ahead around, stop into fuel, and we'll die for sure. That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> How do you know what's waiting at those coordinates? I don't. Neither does Fred Johnson. And when the Philotus hit the fan, he will wipe his hands clean of you. That's assuming it's not a setup in the first place. Why would he lie about the Scabuli? Get himself tangled up in this mess. You're out of your ever loving mind, you think you can trust that guy? Look, I only committed myself. Fred Johnson offered to crew me up. You guys will be safe here on Tycho till all this blows over, then you can go back to your lives. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're using his crew? How do you know he's not gonna space you the second you get out Because there? you're gonna rig the Rossi so it only responds to my command. For God's sake. Look, I don't need to trust Fred Johnson. We both have a gun to each other's head. So, what is this? Shit. Goodbye. No! I like our team. I love the distress call in the camp. Amos. I knew. Holden did the right thing. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. Wow. You were afraid of me. Oh. An innocent kid and you forced her to do your dirty work no. oh. she came to me asked me to help her she knew what she was doing she was willing to make a sacrifice for us she was more than you she trusted you she put herself in your hands catch up because she couldn't see the blood on him just like your sister is that right when she like 15 when you let her die out on a belt Oh, my sister Athena was touched by the hand of God. The most beautiful child in all the belt, the smartest. But she was fragile. Her bones were like chalk from spending a lifetime in zero G. She was never going to recover. An impossible burden for a dirt poor family of rock hoppers. When she became too ill even to travel, our family was starving. So you killed her. 
and that makes me a monster. There was no script to bury him, so I laid it to rest in a beautiful bauxite tunnel that we discovered together. And living with this pain, I came to realize that I have millions of brothers and sisters in the belt. I even count you among them. As I did Julie and Eartha. So everybody dies for the cause. Except for you. <sighs> now I tell you the truth about Julie. If she was here right now, she'd spit in your face. I believe that she would. You are everything she despised. Die as you lived. Oh my god. Pause. Can you even imagine having to make that kind of a choice? Because those are the realities of your circumstances. Like, if you don't act, people will die. If you do act, someone that you love and admire will die. And you'll be responsible either way. Is what makes me so angry about this, like, ridiculous inequality of wealth that we've got in our own world right now is that we're, we're forcing people to make these monstrous decisions just so that some people can be really, 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 really rich. Oh. And then we always act surprised when people do really desperate acts or acts of violence or something like that. And it's, it's often the people who can't believe it can't even imagine that level of desperation where you don't know where your next pit, bit of food, not even meal, just your next bit of food, scrap of food is, is going to come from when you're next going to be able to drink clean water. And people want to be smug and superior over those people who are living that way rather than just doing everything that they can to, to make it not that way. That was that was my joint favourite piece of dialogue since um De Graff and Avasarala about the you know card games. Oh goodness me, that was a punch in the guts. Play. And grovel like we are some second class citizens. Well enjoy your final Private citizen Christian, he can't go squeezing his berries. I politely asked to borrow his spy on Tycho. Why are you interested in Fred Johnson? He has blood on his hands and wants redemption. While Earth and Mars throw sand in each other's faces, the OPA rises in the belt. Tycho spins up asteroids. The Donager was mm. destroyed by advanced stealth warships. And Fred Johnson is building the largest spacecraft in human history. You'd have to be mm. siphoning off resources on a massive scale. The OPA smuggler we captured was carrying South composites. That's not a coincidence. Are you going to shut me down? The OPA killed your son. Are you sure this isn't personal? <sighs> You're damn right it's personal. You keep me in the loop. Of course. Wow. Daniel. <laughs> Not interested, Daniel. That bucker, 
Ogling you. He's packing a knife on his left hip. Thanks. Wow. Oh, I fucking love you. Wait. I, I can't. Oh, come on. You're not married. I was married. Out on a run, all I could think about was getting back home. Lying in my bed. All I could dream about was getting back out here. Wow. Big Brass said I didn't have what it takes to fly them badass gunships. Flying the Rossinante back there, that was just about the best feeling I have ever had. A lot of Martians gave their lives getting us onto this ship. They fucking did. Are there any bodies we need to take care of? Lieutenant Lopez. He's in the rear hole. He died for us. I'll make sure his body's returned to Mars. He's a fellow soldier. Thank you. God. They try to access any areas that they shouldn't, and the Rosie's core will self-destruct. Oh, God. How times change. Crap. Do not tell me he's going to die. Jump down! Near! Oh! Second marsh ship. Sometimes a whiny little prick. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna miss you, pal. I <laughs> hope no one there needs medical attention. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit. To those brave, crazy bastards who got us off the Donager. Hey. Gung ho military hypnotized by a uniform. Fanatics, mm. religious freaks. Those Marines could have saved themselves. Oh no, Fred's gonna find the chip. Why did you come back for us? Told you. Well, you're only there because of me. <sighs> so what's next for Naomi Nagata? No, another. I'm using my last remaining brain cells to try and kill my last remaining brain cells. <laughs> so let's get to work on that, shall we? Who are you? No! That's the spy! Oh my god. I've never killed anyone before. Oh. But it wasn't the blood or the iron smell of it that got me. Who was there? A little girl. In the window. Watch me. The only guy I ever killed. You know, every time you remember something, your mind changes it just a little until your best and your worst memories. They're your biggest illusions. My advice is you just forget it. It's terrible advice. Yeah, that is true. You have to process it and allow her to grieve. Well done for giving her a cuddle. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, 
That was respectful, me there. Well done. I guess I'll uh, put on some coffee. Yay! We'll bring your Lionel Polanski home if he's out there. It's Julie, isn't it? In return, I want you to help me find someone. Someday I'll come to you with a name. No questions asked. I'll do what I can. Who is this person? Oh, Amos! It's not dormant, it's giving off heat. I'm seeing molecular reactions, vibrational resonances all across the spectrum. Can you hear me? Where'd this recording come from? Phoebe. That's what I think. Phoebe, Phoebe Station. I meant where'd you get it? Julie Mao. Scientists on Phoebe discover something. Something big. It would tip the balance of power. The OPA gets wind of it. They send a crew out to steal it. Mission goes south. Which leaves someone who got a lot of power, a lot of resources, who do anything to keep it quiet. And that man, he holds the key. How'd you know it's a man? levels are off the charts. We're ready for the next phase. We need to get a sample of Phoebe. Now. Fuck. Can you tell anyone about this? No, just you. What about this? Copies? Erase Detective Miller's case files and cancel all his clearances. What are you doing? You're fired. <gasps> what the fuck? Dawes. He bought you. Get out. You're in his pocket. What are you buying himself a whole police force? Yeah, but you're uh, right. Security. I'm tired of speaking to a child. You know, I'm tired of speaking. Help Mr. Miller find the door. If he gives you any problems, feel free to shoot him. Oh, you got be joking! Oh my god! I'm sorry. Oh, his little face! Oh, make up now. Make up now. This is the aspirator Rocinante requesting clearance for departure. Understood, Rocinante. That is definitely one of my favourite episodes yet. I loved every second of that. So much happened. But we found out that... <laughs> what did we not find out in this episode? So a lot of plot lines confirmed. At least for now. They could, you know, throw us another curveball. But something I need to mention, because I know I'll forget it if I start getting into the characters, but remember that conversation with Avasaral and her grandson? <laughs> Well, now we know that someone just did throw some rocks and we don't know. And they hit what looked like a Martian ship. Was it actually the ship that had boarded them previously in Bilmanker? So Mars is going to be even more pissy now than they were before because they've not only now lost the Donager, but they've lost one of the ships that is trying to, you know, throw muscle around in the face of losing the Donager. So that's going to have some serious repercussions. And, you know, I, I was trying to work out what Fred was talking about around the, the Nauvoo and the current theory that, that Avasarala is working on is that he's been basically overcharging the Mormons, pocketing the money and using it to resource this wing of the OPA or whatever that is attacking the ships. But obviously what we're being told on our side 
by Fred Johnson is that he's none the wiser about what happened to the scopuli and he considers it sort of a hostile attack and a mystery and he wants to know the answers and I think we're headed off to see Julie Mao who will hopefully have some of those answers. Now if Fred Johnson's telling the truth that's great if Fred Johnson's lying then this mission is to retrieve Julie Mao and kill a witness. So whether what we're watching is good news or bad news is really going to depend on the integrity of Fred Johnson, which we just have no idea who this man is yet. And of course, the other thing we've got happening in that, in that camp is that Vassarala has managed to get hold of a spy in the Fred Johnson camp who is good, who is already going to have sent her a video feed of Holden and Naomi chatting away in a bar so I don't think it's going to be very long before Avasarala's hot on their heels which again is really bad if Avasarala is the one behind all this as a sort of payback for her son I I would be surprised if that was the case only because I think I really want Avasarala to be a character that I really like moving forward and I would have a real issue if she had done all this. Miller was kidnapped by Anderson Dawes for basically not playing ball and, and Anderson Dawes told us an awful story about essentially why he is who he is is that he was forced to make this absolutely awful decision. Obviously, this is his account, but it felt real. It certainly was acted as if it, those were really his feelings. And, and as I was listening to it, I believed him entirely. And I understand the level of content that he would have for a man like Miller, who kind of disowns his belter identity, sees it as a weakness. It's almost really like any kind of class system where you know you get those people who are working class and then they become middle class and they have a real contempt for poor people then on because it's like they carry so much shame that they were ever in their circumstance in those circumstances that when they look at people that are still in those circumstances it's like they can't be with it and instead of say adopting an em an empathy response which would have you advocate as hard as you can for a change in the in the system that would have that be a different way they don't necessarily believe that that's possible. So they have this almost disgust response and a shifting of the blame onto those people for sort of being weak and feeble and generally rubbish. So, you know, they deserve their lot. Which I think for a lot of people is easier to cope with than those people are exactly like you, but with none of your life chances or luck. I'm really finding the class dynamics of all this important because it is it is the central theme of this show so far. It is about the haves and the have-nots. It is about egregious inequality of wealth and power and the cons and the consequence of that inequality of wealth and power in a world that runs on wealth and power is access to resources, life expectancy quality of life you know the, the chances you know the, the mortality rates of your children the incidence of disease these are all knock-on effects of poverty and, and inequality and they could be eradicated if we were in a society that shared but no one's ready or not enough people are yet ready to share and i love that the show is is making those points and not really making points, having that conversation through this 
alternate universe. I think it's really brave and really well done. We bumped into Diogo again with his uncle Matteo. They were trying to retrieve their rocks, bumped into some Martians who basically forced a horrible situation upon them. They humiliated the uncle and then I think he actually did walk off with that bottle of water, which I thought was actually made me feel nauseous. The idea that when you have so much, you know, taking a bottle of water from that man at that point, it's priceless, that water at that point. You know, it's, it's life and death. It's not like, you know, nicking a fiver out of someone's pocket. You're, he you literally took the water out of his mouth. You know, it was just really not okay. Really, really not okay. And then told him that he couldn't travel through the restricted zone on the way back, meaning that he'd have to take a different route. And and that, basically, they didn't have the, enough resources, but water, air, fuel, anything, to, to make that trip. Effectively killing them. So Matteo gets pissed, and that's when the rocks happen. Diogo's floating around in space. As we didn't see him yet die... I'm wondering if he will be retrieved, but potentially have to face awful consequences of what his uncle has done, because he'll be the only one alive to answer those consequences. That's a worrying thought. Back to Miller, I just realised I've segued. Back to Miller. After that conversation with Anderson Dawes, basically they were going to kill him. Anderson Dawes signed off on the death of Miller, but Octavia Mus saved him. He then takes the, the data to Shadid, his commanding officer, and she makes sure there's no other copies of it. I hope he took a copy of it. Locks it in a safe and fires him, d deletes his access permissions and everything. So he's not official, he's not officially it doesn't work for Star Helix anymore. Because apparently now Star Helix is in the pocket of the OPA. So it's starting to feel like at the beginning you thought, oh, the OPA couldn't possibly be coordinating this because where would they get all these resources from? Clearly, the OPA are a lot more integrated into this system than, than perhaps I gave them credit for. Even the Star Helix security people had OPA tattoos. And in fairness, Anderson Dawes did say to Miller, you know, what's your price? What's your fee? You know, no offence. I just want to know how much it's going to cost me to bring you over to the other side. So this is much more organised. And yet, both Anderson Dawes and Fred Johnson insist... They do not know what happened to the Scopuli, that that was their mission. Their mission was to get hold of that information from the data broker, which was on the, anu anu the Anubis. So the Scopuli was going out to intercept the Anubis, get that data and then do with it, you know, whatever they, they want to do with it. And instead, the Scopuli is destroyed pretty much and so is the Canterbury and so is the Donager which means either both of them are lying one of them is lying or both of them are telling the truth and there is an external party which is creating these circumstances any of those is fascinating to me. So I'm going to be happy what, wherever this goes. Naomi was less suspicious this episode. And I really can't wait to find out who is this person that she didn't say goodbye to. We In episode four, she's the person she didn't say goodbye to. Um, she's also referred to, you know, she's no men and causes. I'm going to shit a brick if it's Anderson Dawes. But we'll find out. And then, as we say, we're going to have a, va a Vassarala hot on their heels. So, yeah, I am ecstatic. I can't wait to watch the next episode now. 
because now we're going to have this mission. I'm assuming, I can't, I didn't even properly take in the name that they were using and the idea that it was a man, because I'm so convinced it's going to be Julie Mao, which is going to be really, really funny if it isn't Julie Mao. <laughs> but I hope it's Julie Mao. I feel like by the end of this season, I tell you what, it's not necessarily this will happen, but this is what I want to happen. Is it by the end of this season, we have found Julie Mao, she's alive, and like, she's a principal character. That would make me really, really happy. Because everything I'm hearing about her so far, I love. I really, I'm like, she sounds like a proper badass. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to draw it to a close there. Thanks to everyone for watching this video. Until the next time, bye-bye.